Hello, and welcome to Lesson 4 of the Wild Apricot Boot Camp, where we're finally going to discuss how to build and customize a Wild Apricot website. Just to give you a quick overview, uh, we're going to be discussing mobile responsiveness, the fact that the website can scale to mobile screens. We're going to look at the themes a little bit. We're going to discuss widgets, which is how you can integrate Wild Apricot with an existing website, should you wish to do that, uh, why you might want to do that, and also how to use these widgets. And finally, the main content of our presentation will be how to actually build a website on Wild Apricot. We'll talk about our CMS, our content management system, how it works, drag and drop. Uh, we'll talk about the available gadgets and how to tweak them, access their settings and what they do. And finally, we'll discuss site pages versus page templates, uh, the overall structure of your site pages. But first and foremost, we just need to discuss logging in. A lot of you are probably coming back for the second or third or maybe fourth, fifth time, and you need to know how to get back into your site. And so I'll show you a really quick and easy way. Now you can, of course, log in by going directly to wildapricot.com and then clicking the login option here in the top right. Entering your email address and password will have the system try to retrieve your account based on those credentials. But I'd actually recommend going directly to your Wild Apricot trial site. When you create your account, we're going to assign you a unique Wild Apricot URL. It's usually something like your organization name .wildapricot.org. And you'll just want to click on the person or the login icon up in usually the top right corner of the page. Uh, a neat thing about this page is that it also allows you to actually reset your password, unlike the login form on wildapricot.com. And you just need to click forgot password to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and get signed in here. Agree to the terms of use. And upon signing in, I notice that I'm still in the public view. To get to the admin content, the admin view, I just need to click on this admin view click up here in the top right. And here we are. We've landed in the admin backend. The first thing you'll see here are some tips and guides to help you get started setting everything up. And uh, we also have this quick demo available. It's uh, our getting started video. It touches on everything that we're going to talk about throughout these bootcamp videos. So it's really, really, really good as a refresher. But I'd recommend sticking with these if you want something a little bit more in depth. You're always welcome to come back here later on, though, just to you know, remind yourself of everything you saw. The other thing I want to show you is our help center right here on the left you can access our help pages at any point when you're going through Wild Apricot. And you just want to click on this help and support option here. One really neat thing is it's always going to recommend the most relevant help articles it can find based on wherever you are on the site. But you can search for other topics too, so feel free to use this liberally as you're, as you're going through setting everything up. Um, for instance, uh, you want to set up membership level as well. Membership setup checklist is probably something really beneficial for you there. And you can just keep working here on the side and keep the help icon open here on the right. Now let's talk about Wild Apricot's website offerings. First off, a quick overview. Wild Apricot's website functionality is included in every single plan, be it the free plan, the free 30-day trial, or any of our upgraded subscription plans. It requires no coding know-how. It is a simple drag and drop builder. But if you have the technical know-how, if you are a web designer, a web developer, you can still use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to fine tune things however you'd like. Wild Apricot can also be used as your primary site host. As long as the website's been built through us, using that drag and drop builder, we'll host it for you. You don't have to find an external website host like GoDaddy or Network Solutions to do the actual website hosting. Finally, you don't need to use Wild Apricot's website builder if you don't want to. It'll be available there for you, but some people come in with their own website, be it a WordPress site, Wix, Squarespace, something like that. You can still use Wild Apricot with those. It'll just basically serve as a backend with some embeddable widgets to let users interact with the functionality. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. Another very important note is that all of Wild Apricot's themes are mobile friendly. Whether the user is viewing it on the desktop or on their mobile phone, the site will scale down to fit and should look perfectly fine on either. It's included in all of our themes, this functionality. It's uh, going to allow all the images, the forms, the menu bars to all shrink down or, or scale up depending uh, on what size the screen is the user's viewing on. And if you're an experienced developer and you want to tweak that behavior even further, you're more than welcome to. Again, via CSS, JavaScript, customization, anything like that. And these are a few resources I'd recommend you check out. The first is just what you need to know about websites. It's just basically a fact sheet. 
just covers a very, very broad but decent summary of everything we can do there. And also some tips on designing responsive pages, just best practices for mobile friendliness, and also more information on pages using our widgets. So let's do a bit of a deeper dive into themes. First and foremost, picking the appropriate theme for your site is probably the first thing you should do before you start building your website out. You can change your theme at any time, but in doing so you may lose some content or you may find stuff gets rearranged and uh, doesn't transition as cleanly as you might like. The system will do its best, but it's not perfect. So the first time you log in and decide that you want to start working on the website, you're going to want to head over to website and then theme and pick a theme to start with. There's no wrong answer here. Uh, just pick something based on what you like best aesthetically, or maybe what matches your organization's brand colors best. Functionality-wise, they're all essentially the same. Here's a quick snapshot of how that's going to look, but let's dive into the actual system to see how that will appear. So here we've landed on our dashboard page, and to choose our theme and really get started working on the website in general, we'll want to click the website option right here on the left side of the screen. That will load us into the website module, where we'll be able to navigate up here to theme. And we can pick whichever theme we'd like. You can see there are quite a few available here to choose from, and each one has a number of color variations. So let's say I want to go with case file, and I like this green color. I would just click on the variant I want over here on the right, and then I'd hit apply selected theme up here. Uh, the system will warn you that when you make changes, uh, you will be making permanent changes to the site. So I'll hit the preview button. And here it is. We've got some demo pages set up so I can get a feel for how everything will look. And as you can see, the message is telling me the same. And if I like how it looks, I can hit make new theme permanent. And if I don't like how it looks, I can hit revert back to previous. So I'll go ahead and make this new theme permanent. And then I'll click again to confirm. Perfect. Now, you may notice it's actually a bit of a mix of our old theme and our new theme, which is something that can happen. Not to worry, we can actually just get rid of this old home page by hitting move to trash, because a new home page has been set up for us right here. It's called home demo, and this one more accurately reflects the uh, theme's default home page. So this is going to be a really, really good starting point for you, and every time you switch your theme, this is what you're going to see. And if you want to rename it, you can just click the edit button here and just where you see page name here on the left, remove the word demo and then click save. Simple as that. And once again, we have a couple of resources I'd recommend you take a look at. First is our themes page from wildapricot.com, which just gives you a quick preview of all the themes that are available. Uh, this is a really good resource if you haven't opened up a free trial yet and you just want to get an idea of what's possible. And second is more information on theme overrides. Um, and I put a big warning here, it is for advanced users only. Uh, this theme overrides allow you to download the theme files and make a lot of direct changes. So most of you probably won't even need to touch this, but if you're an experienced developer and you really want to overhaul what you've seen so far, just know that it's possible. And uh, these guides here from our help site will walk you through everything you need to know. Right, so now let's talk about how to actually use Wild Apricot CMS. Now, first and foremost, what is a CMS? Well, it's a content management system. Uh, in other words, it's a way to create and manage all the content on your website, the, the text, the images, everything like that. And how does Wild Apricot CMS work? Well, it is mostly a drag and drop builder. It's aiming to be as simple as possible, and it should be very familiar if you're used to working with other website editors or even just email tools and things like that, because it has the exact same toolbar that you would see on Microsoft Word or an email editor, anything like that. It's got your font tools, it's got your bold, italicized, underlined tools, your font size selector, your color picker, anything like that. Additionally, the gadgets that we provide will automatically create complicated things like forms. So if you're thinking you may have to learn some HTML to build the form, uh, get all your content in place, and have it automatically talk to Wild Apricot, worry not. The system will take care of that for you. It's all automatically generated based on the information that you've entered into the back end of the site in earlier steps. So here's a few resources I'd recommend checking out. Uh, a quick intro video, which will take you through everything you need to know. Uh, again, more information about what you need to know about website setup. And finally, and most importantly, in my opinion, the website setup checklist, which will take you through the recommended order for completing all of the steps of your website. 
setup. It's a super, super useful tool. Now, gadgets make up the meat of the content on your Wild Apricot pages. They are built right into Wild Apricot, and again, they let you do very complex things like membership application forms, login buttons, slideshows, the, the kind of things you'd need to know a lot about JavaScript and CSS and other programming to accomplish without actually needing to know those things. Let's take a look at how that works. Here we are on the home page of our site. To demonstrate the settings that are available, as well as the various gadgets that we offer, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Add Page button up here in the top left corner. You could also go and edit an existing page by clicking Edit, but for simplicity's sake, we'll use this for now. The first thing I'm going to want to do is name my page, which I will call Test Page, just to keep things simple and the page URL will also automatically fill in here. Now you don't need to enter a full HTTPS or www something 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 in this field. As you can see down below, whatever you enter here is what's going to appear after the forward slash after your address. So wa-test45.wildapricot.org forward slash test page would be the URL of this page. Keep it simple, keep it something that your members can remember and that won't look too messy when you're linking to it, um, you know, in emails and other pages where you might want to share the link. Additionally, you'll notice that we've defaulted to the standard template. We haven't touched on page templates yet, but we will very shortly. So let's skip this for now, and then we'll come back. Next is the position and menu. We can choose where it appears up on our menu gadget. Uh, this particular theme has a very small menu, but most of your themes are going to have a wider one, so more pages will be able to appear. I'm going to just keep it nice and simple and make it the first page that appears after home on the menu. So it actually should appear right after home and right before news demo up there. Next is the access level. I can make this page public so that anybody who's visiting my site can see it. I can make it admin only, which is usually good if you're just working on the web page and you're not ready to share it with anybody yet. And I can also restrict it to members only. And I can make that available to all members or maybe just all groups or just a particular membership level. I have a lot of control over what's available there but we'll keep this page public. Finally, down below, we have our meta tags. And if you know what meta tags are, you probably already know what to do with this section. Um, if not, don't worry. A lot of this stuff is just going to be automated for you. But uh, you can insert custom code, headers, uh, and tags as well for search engine optimization purposes. Now, let's take a look at how to add a gadget to the page. We're going to go over and click Gadgets up here in the top left, and we'll see a list of all the gadgets we have available to choose from. The most common gadget that most of you are going to be using is the content gadget located right up here in the custom content section towards the top. I'm going to click on the content icon and I'll just drag it over to any available placeholder on my page. Now the content gadget is really easy to use. You see when you hover over it, it kind of grays out like this and we have some options available. Most notably, click to edit. So we'll go ahead and do that. And there's our cursor blinking and you've seen this a million times with Microsoft Word, your email editors, any other text processing software. Uh, it's as simple as typing anything you'd like there and you'll be able to start adding content to your pages. You can also add images by clicking the image tool up here on the top toolbar. And we've got our sample image there. Um, you can also adjust the settings for these images by hovering over the image, clicking the settings option, and uh, here we'll be able to choose the size, choose the text flow. We can adjust how that appears within the actual content gadget. Uh, set the margins if we want to add a little bit of spacing. We can add a border, and we can change the color of that border. And we can add some alt text as well, which is what appears when the image can't be loaded. On the left side of the screen here, we have the gadget's settings. Now you may also notice, I'll, ta I'll click out of this content gadget for just a second. When you're hovering over it like this, and you click the settings icon right here, uh, that's just another way to get this panel to show on the left side. And here we have some more options available. We can choose a background color, for instance. We can choose a background image. Uh, we've got a few preset images here you can choose from, or you can click the Files tab up here and choose any file you'd like on your PC. So if we use the same image again, there's a, well, there's an interesting effect. <laughs> and we can adjust the behavior, whether it gets tiled, the alignment of the image, all sorts of things like that. And here's something that a lot of people get stuck on. Um, margins versus padding. Margins are a way to add spacing on the outside of the gadget. Um, so say between uh, the border right here and this side of the gadget. So for instance, if we were to add a left margin of 40 pixels, 
you'll see it kind of moves inwards a little bit. On the other hand, um, let me remove this background image for visibility. Let's say we wanted to increase the spacing within the gadget. That's where padding comes into play. So let's just give it a nice 20 pixels all the way around. And you'll see how the content moves away from the border there, um, but still within the gadget. Padding's really, really useful for keeping your page looking neat, uh, so things don't get stuck right up against the borders. In the advanced section, you can adjust the HTML ID, CSS class, and inline styles. M most of you probably aren't even going to need to touch that, but know that it is an option if you have that skill set. Now, as for other gadgets, let's take a look at the membership application gadget, which is available just a little bit down the page in the members and contacts section. Simply click on the icon and then drag and drop it anywhere you'd like. Uh, note that we can actually snap it to the bottom of this gadget. You see it says place after gadget or we can just add it to another placeholder. Um, I'm going to snap it to the bottom here. And we don't actually have to do too much here. Uh, we can click on the settings. We see the settings panel appears here on the left. But all of our membership levels, our fields, all of that has already gone ahead and automatically flown into the application form. The only settings we have available to choose from are the which levels are actually shown. So right now we've got both sample levels, as well as the sort order. So you can have it alphabetical, uh, you can have it by price, or you can do a manual drag and drop where you just click and drag over here on the left to rearrange them. Again, you have margins and padding options available as well as those more advanced options, but this is a really, really basic gadget to work with. You just drag and drop and it's ready for you to work with. Uh, we'll delete that for now by just hovering over the gadget and clicking this delete icon in the top right. And we'll drag and drop our next gadget, which is the event calendar. I'll put it over here in its own placeholder just for a change of pace. And just like the application form gadget, you'll note that it's automatically brought in all of my events. I, I didn't have to add these manually, they just flow right through. Let's take a quick look at the settings here by hovering over the gadget and once again clicking the settings icon, which has revealed the settings panel on the left side of the screen. The event calendar gadget allows you to filter your events to only show events with certain tags if you'd like to do that. Maybe you want to have multiple calendars on your site that show different types of events. Uh, that's a very useful way to do that. Uh, it lets us show past events at the very bottom if we'd like, just down here. And it also lets us show um, our two different views, like which view we want to have by default. Uh, the list view, which is what you're seeing right now, or the calendar view. And we can even choose with the scale of the calendar, month, week, or year based, and which day the week starts on. A few additional settings are available down below just to control headers and things like that. And of course, our margins and padding options. The last gadget I'll show off today is our member directory gadget, which you can drag and drop onto your page like usual. And what this does, plain and simple, is displays all of the members of your organization. I should say all of the active members of your organization so that other members can see them. If we hover over the, the gadget and click its settings icon up here, we once again have some settings to play with. We can enable quick filtering, which is an easy way to have certain fields appear at the top of the page for uh, users to uh, filter the directory by. Uh, we don't have any fields available right now, but if you, for instance, had a drop-down field listing everybody's state, um, that would appear as a quick filter for them to filter the directory by at the top of the page. So we'll uncheck that for now because it's not going to be doing anything for us. We also have the option to do an advanced search. So that enables this setting, if you see right there in the top left, advanced search, if they click on that, It'll take them over to another page where they can do their own search based on any fields that uh, you've allowed over here. Uh, right now, I'm allowing them to search by user ID, first name, last name, email address, and phone. Uh, if they happen to know a member's details in any of those areas, they could look them up that way. I can also have the system show the advanced search by default, but for most people, that's not necessary. Maybe it is for you. Uh, if so, that setting is going to be for you. And most importantly, we need to take a look at this section just up here. Um, one, we can control which members to actually include in the directory. Some people don't want all their members to show, and that's fine. Um, you can show results from a saved search, if you have one created, just people of certain levels, or even just people of selected membership groups. So I could just show my board members, for instance. Additionally, uh, I can have the directory only show bundle administrators by clicking this checkbox. So if you're working with membership bundles, that might be useful for you if you don't want too much redundancy. Uh, but if you want to show everybody in a family, you don't need to use it. It's totally optional. 
Finally, and this is the one that most people get stuck on, is how to actually change which fields are shown here. So right now you'll see it's showing name, um, it has a slot for organization, and it's showing the membership uh, that the person belongs to. If we click the Customize Results Layout button right here, the system's going to let us choose what's actually shown in the directory. So it's sorting by last name right now. I can change that to any of these other fields. It's going to show the name in the first column. I actually like that. I'll leave that as is. But I could also add another field down below, like their user ID if I wanted to. The organization field actually isn't showing any fields right now, um, and that's because the organization field by default is set to no access. It's an administrator-only field. We can update that by adjusting the privacy settings, and uh, we can touch on that in just a moment. The, uh, in this case, let's just make things simple and show the avatar. And I'll rename the heading that appears to profile picture. We'll leave the membership level as is, and we can also add a fourth as uh, well as a bottom row um, by you checking these boxes over here. But I'll hit apply for now. Now I've taken the liberty of uploading images to each of these members' profiles, so something should be coming up, but due to their privacy settings, they aren't, and I'll show you really quickly how to fix that. We're going to need to click the home icon up here in the top left to navigate away from the website area. We're going to go to settings, then we're going to go to privacy up here under members. From here, we'll click the edit button, and then you'll see right here that the avatar field that we selected is currently set to no access, which means that other members aren't allowed to see uh, what I've uploaded here. So I'm just going to swap that over to anybody so that the public, members, anybody can see it. Uh, if you have a members only directory, you'll probably want to choose the members only option instead, but for my purposes, anybody's fine. And then I'll click save. And then I'll click Apply to All Records. This step is very important, otherwise your existing members won't be updated. The system will also have me type the word Reapply, just to ensure that I'm sure. And then I'll hit OK. And now, every one of my members' personal privacy settings will have been updated. We're going to double back to the website, head on over to our test page, and there's everybody's profile pictures coming across. Always, always, always double check the privacy settings uh, whenever you've, uh, whenever you're working with the directory and you find that certain information isn't showing. It's usually the reason for that, those kinds of issues. Now, real quick, let's talk about layouts, which are a really effective way to add two or more gadgets side by side on a page. You'll want to click the layouts option up here on the left side, and then you can drag and drop a one, two, three, or four column layout. Um, or a custom layout, which 99% of you won't actually need to use. It's, uh, it's fairly advanced. It involves custom coding with HTML. Um, if you want more information about that, gethelp.wildapricot.com has a great page on layouts, and it'll go into more detail on how to set that up. But for the majority of you, something like a two-column layout will work just fine. So we'll use that as an example. I'm going to click the two-column layout icon and drag and drop it over either to an existing placeholder or just below an existing gadget. And that will enable me to start placing gadgets side by side. So for instance, I can take this existing content gadget we set up and just click on it and then drag it down below and drop it on the left side there. Additionally, if I click gadgets up here again on the left side, I can add a slideshow gadget to the page. And that will get some nice images flowing alongside the content. If I click on the slideshow gadget settings icon, just so you can see it, uh, I can choose from demo images, which we've set up for you. Or I can choose images from a folder on my page, say the pictures folder that we were working with. Or I can use my photo albums if I've set up a photo album gadget on another page on the site. Uh, there's one set up by default as a demo, so I can use that here. There's some other options down below as well that let me control the overall orientation, 16 by 9 uh, 3x4, 1x1, one one. Uh, you'll you want to pick whatever looks best with your personal images. If you're doing portraits, you know, you probably want to use the portrait option. If you're doing more landscape photos, landscape will work. And you can also choose how long the images are displayed, uh, how long it takes for them to transition. And if you click this button here, you can even add links to individual images, either to a, a custom URL, to a specific site page, or to a particular event. And the last thing worth mentioning with layouts is that if you hover over them, you'll see this orange border appear around it with a little tab sticking out of the top that says layout. 
If you click the settings icon here, we have a few additional controls. Um, we can set an overall background color or image, which is nice if you want a consistent background going across the entire thing. Um, but we can also set the column spacing, which is really nice if you want a little bit of uh, separation between your two gadgets. See that? It just adds a nice border between the two. We can also click and drag the middle column to dynamically adjust um, the size of each column, which is just a really easy way to do that. There's also our usual padding and uh, advanced options here, but just thought I'd give you a quick peek into those settings. So as you can see, working with Wild Apricot's website builder is really just a matter of dragging and dropping different gadgets onto the page, exploring the settings, and overall just making sure you've set up all the backend stuff, like your events and your memberships, so that it'll all flow through to the gadget dynamically. Taking a lot of the work off your shoulders and making sure you don't have to do everything twice. Again, just some very, very helpful resources all about gadgets. This will tell you, well, as, you as you'd expect, everything you need to know about gadgets. Um, an introduction to gadgets video, as well as a list of all the available gadgets that Wild Apricot offers. And those links will have links to additional links um, throughout our help site to go into more detail on any gadget that you want to learn more about. And now we move on to a big one. Site pages versus page templates. Uh, a point of confusion for a lot of people and uh, I'm here to explain everything in more detail. So, a site page would be each individual page that you've set up on your site. Uh, for instance, just a moment ago, when we created our test page, we created a site page. Um, that would be like your home page, your about us page, your join us page, your event calendar page. Usually they're specialized for, for a certain purpose um, by using strategic use of certain gadgets, like only having an event calendar on a page, for instance. These Site pages all use page templates as their basis, however. And a page template controls the overall look and feel of the site. It's mainly responsible for the header and the footer of your page, and every single site page uh, just inherits those elements so that you don't have to manually rebuild the header and the footer on every page that you create. So think of it that way. Page templates, header and footer. Site pages, the content in between. These guides right here are going to go into a bit more detail on page templates, uh, adding, modifying, deleting them, as well as just site page settings that you should know about. We touched on a lot of these earlier, but this is always good for a refresher. Of course, I'm going to demonstrate it to you right now as well, just to show you what to look for. All right, so a lot of you, the first time you come in, are going to land right here on your website and site pages, and you're going to click Edit. And you're going to try to modify your header. And you're going to click this, but you're going to find you actually can't access these areas. They're, they're walled off. And you get a message that says, to move or modify this gadget, edit the page template. Well, where do you do that? You're actually going to need to save or cancel your changes and leave the site page area. And right up here at the top, click Page Templates. Now, you may have a different number of templates depending on whether or not you've switched themes before or how many times you have switched themes, um, but there's two really good things to keep in mind. Most of your pages are going to start with the home template, which is going to be used on the home page, and the standard template, which is used by just about every page on your site. You can see it right up here, used on 43 pages. Um, because of that, you're probably going to want to modify the standard template first. It takes a huge load off your shoulders if you do all of your work on this template that's being used by the majority of your pages. That way you don't have to go back and switch all those pages to another template, which is a time-consuming process. So we'll choose our standard template here. We'll click Edit up in the top left. And now we can get at all of this content. You'll see that I can click inside here, and I can modify what I see. So we'll destroy this logo here. And we'll click the image tool and insert our own. I'm sure you'll have a better logo than this, but this is just for example's sake. Um, we can also adjust some of the, the padding options and things like that if we need to make things fit a little bit better. And we can remove the text and we can enter any text we'd like up here. We can also highlight it. We can use the font color tools to choose another font color, add a highlight if necessary. Um, you can even add uh, links to files or use the link tool to insert links to other pages on your Wild Apricot site. So this is how you get up at the header and uh, by extension how you get to the footer and update this content that otherwise looks inaccessible. And again, everything that we do here on the standard template will flow back to our site pages automatically, saving us the trouble of having to recreate these every single time. So. 
always go to your page templates first, get the logo and get the header in place. You know, you're going to, it, it looks, it looks like you've made a lot more progress that way. And uh, it's, it's, it's going to solve a lot of confusion for you. And now for the more creative side of today's presentation, the colors and styles panel. Well, what is colors and styles? It's a way to change the colors and the fonts and the backgrounds and all of that throughout your website without the need to go to each individual page and maybe use the content gadgets uh, content editor to make smaller changes. It's a good way to make sweeping changes to the overall palette um, so you can have your brand colors in there and also change the fonts if you have a particular font you'd rather use throughout the site, all sorts of things like that. Here's a quick look at the interface. We'll be jumping into more depth in a second. And as you can see from this little quick mini demo, um, you can use the quick customization panel to very quickly just change the colors that are available. Again, just further reading, the customizing colors and styles page is going to be good for getting used to the tool, getting a good introduction to it. We also have a page that just outlines all of the site customization options. Uh, you can get more advanced. Like I said, you can use CSS and JavaScript if you have the know-how. And I've seen some of our partners, for instance, do some really amazing things um, using that. But it's for advanced users, and you don't have to know it if you, if you don't know it. Like, you can still build a website without it. Additionally, we have a quick guide on setting site backgrounds, which is well, useful for everybody. Everyone likes a good background on their site. But now let's take a look at how the actual tool operates. So to modify the colors and styles of our site, we'll just want to navigate over to the website area, click Colors and Styles up here, and there's our quick customization panel on the left. So whenever you hover over one of these sections, background image, background color, you'll notice that it highlights the corresponding element on the page that this would modify. And I'll use our test page as an example that we just created. So the background color, for instance, we can set that to any color we'd like, and you see that it's dynamically changing there. We can also save these colors for later. So uh, we've chosen a color we like, and then we just need to click the plus icon over here, and that custom palette is ready to go, and the system will remember it. We can also modify other backgrounds. Again, we've got the header, which just highlights the top area, the content, which is the main body down here, and the footer at the very bottom. Now, I'm no web designer myself. I'm more of a technical person, <laughs> not a designer. I'm sure you'll be able to pull together something much better looking, um, but this is just to give you a quick crash course in what each of these features will do. Uh, similarly, you can change the body text. If you have content gadgets, for instance, notice that highlights the hello world with a green um, kind of glow. Uh, headings, if you have any headings on your pages, uh, we don't in this case. The links, so you can see that advanced search gets highlighted, and the links on hover, same thing. We also have the ability to modify our menu up at the top. So if we scroll on down here, you see navigation highlights, and we can click on that to view the different options that are available. We can change the, the font that's used, and we can change the font size, um, the font color, anything you'd like, even the hover colors. The drop-down, similarly, is modifiable, though we don't have one on this particular page. Login button, same thing. Change the color, anything you'd like there. Now, the Colors and Styles menu actually has a back-end to it as well. I'm going to go ahead and reset this to default. And you'll, f you'll find, if you click on All Settings here, that there are a a lot more options available to you. Like you can really go in depth, modify individual header backgrounds, individual headings, that would be like, uh, well, the headings that appear above content gadgets, things like that. Now, if you're not sure what any of these items are, don't worry, um, that's pretty common. There's a lot of options here. You're welcome to just play with it. I mean, if, if at any time you need to revert everything, you can just click reset all to default. But I'll also add that our help site is a really good resource for finding the item that you want to change. If you click Help Center up here in the top right, and then click Help and Support, it'll pop out the Help Site side panel. Now let's say there's a particular gadget I want to modify. Let's say the directory, for instance. I'll just type directory, and the first result is Member Directory Gadget. You want to click on that, and then you'll want to go down to Changing Colors and Styles. This setting is available for all of our main gadgets, and you see here it'll tell you where you need to go here in this main settings panel to find the settings that you want to change. Really, really simple, and it's a really, really useful tool. So feel free to use this help center whenever you get stuck. And if you're really stuck, again, we're available here in the bottom right to help you out. Now, I'm no web designer, and maybe you're not either. And if that's the case, no problem. 
You may have an existing website that's uh, built under WordPress or Wix or Squarespace, some other external provider like that. Maybe you've paid a lot of money to get it up and running and you'd like to stick with it. That's totally fine. Wild Apricot offers embeddable widgets which allow you to bring our member-facing functions over into your existing website. Oh, what does that cover? Well, things like the event list slash event calendar, event de details for individual events, the application form, the directory, the member profile pages where members can log in, update their information and renew, uh, b basically any member-facing functionality that they may need to interact with. They'd simply access the widget via the embedded page and any data that they enter will post back to your Wild Apricot database where you can perform your administrative tasks, checking on their renewals, sending follow-up emails to them, anything that you might need to do in the back end. So to clarify, your members will stay on the existing external WordPress site and you, the administrator, will do the administrative stuff from your Wild Apricot site. The members need, never need to navigate over to that Wild Apricot site. So let's dive in and show you a little bit more about how that works and where to find the code. Right, so a few things you need to know about our widgets. First, where to find them. They're up here, if you're under your website area, in the settings area. And then it's going to be the first option listed there, widgets code. If you give that a click, you'll see all of the code ready to go. So it's really just as simple as making sure you're embedding the correct thing. So for events, you can choose individual events to embed or your overall event calendar. Uh, as long as you have a page set up in Wild Apricot with the gadget you'd like to embed as a widget, it'll appear here with the code ready to go. Just click in there, right click and say copy, and then paste it into your existing site into a custom HTML block. Uh, whether it's WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, you name it, any custom website builder is going to support custom HTML, so we should be compatible with all of them. The only changes you might need to make would be regarding the width and the height, which is really just as simple as changing this 750 pixel value to something larger. Um, the height, same thing. You can experiment a little bit and see what works best on your site. Now, our widgets pull in content from a very specific placeholder. Um, so I'll show you real quick how to, a foolproof method to make sure that any page you set up is ready to go for embedding and will look correct when you go about doing it. So we're going to jump back over to the site pages area. And let's say I want to embed, well, let's take the event calendar, for instance. I'll click on that page. We've actually provided one for you by default. I'll click at it, and you'll note that there's a whole bunch of placeholders where it says drop gadget layout here. That's not a good thing when we're doing widgets because, uh, the, again, it only pulls from a specific placeholder. Don't worry too much about that. Just click the page template option here on the left and choose the plain layout template. It may also be called the plain template, depending on your theme. And as you can see, the result is a very, very basic page that just shows the gadget itself. That's much cleaner for embedding. You won't have any extra junk being carried over, and it should look a lot more seamless on your existing website. So just make that switch, keep it basic like this, and then hit save. And as always, we have some helpful resources for you. Our All About Widgets page, which will tell you everything you need, need to know about working with that embed code. Some more information on integrating with other websites. And additionally, integrating with WordPress. Uh, we do also offer a single sign-on plugin, which allows you to restrict WordPress content to your Wild Apricot members. And that's specifically content that is hosted on WordPress, not from Wild Apricot but can be wrapped in short code that uh, will ensure that only logged in members from Wild Apricot see it. Use cases are rare, but it does come in handy for some people. So if that's you, give that a click and you can learn all about it. Finally, for upgraded accounts, we do have a few additional features that are only available to you. Custom domains, um, you'd need to purchase a domain through GoDaddy or Network Solutions or some external domain provider. And through them, it would be pointed to your Wild Apricot site. This will be uh, continue to be hosted through them, so you need to pay for a, a smaller hosting package. But through the use of a free SSL certificate, which we also offer, that domain can be secured through us, be set as the main domain that people will see, hiding the free .wildapricot.org domain that we provide, and for all intents and purposes, that's your main domain going forward. The Wild Apricot one will remain as a backup for you, but that'll really help with branding, things like that. Additionally, once you're on a paid plan, we don't cap the number of administrators you can have. Uh, you can have a thousand admins if you want, not that you'd want to. Um, or more specifically, you can turn as many contacts on your site into administrators. So you're on a plan with 500 contacts, that's up to 500 admins, and so on and so forth. 
Again, here's some more resources, uh, custom domain setup, installing SSL certificates, those two go hand in hand, you want to do one and then the other. And finally, just for informational purposes, a breakdown of functionality by billing plan. Uh, really, the only difference between each of our paid subscription plans is the number of contacts, but this is still helpful if you want to know what the differences are between the free plan, the trial, and the paid subscriptions. Again, for more help, get help.wildapricot.com, available in product as shown earlier, or at the website itself. And you can get in touch with us at coaches at wildapricot.com. And finally, feel free to check out our main site, wildapricot.com. We've got a lot of webinars and other content just to help you grow your membership and uh, hopefully do well in the world of nonprofits and for profits alike. And with that, you're now a pro at Wild Apricot websites. You can brag to all your friends. Now, I really do hope you found the content helpful. And if there's anything uh, you, you missed or you, you're still curious about, get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy to help clarify things. Uh, we'll be available via the in-product chat in the bottom right or by email. Hope to connect with you all and have a great rest of the day.